saying congratulations to this committee led by my friend, Honorable Gideon Mulyungi, and uh, the committee members. Listening and reading through this report, Honorable Speaker, I think if we are to start discussing the success story of C NGCDF, it will take a whole year for this house to conclude on that discussion. Because this country, everywhere, every part of this country, when you travel around, you see evidence of what NGCDF can do in the changing lives of Kenyans, and more so, changing the lives of Kenyans in a positive way. So, when I listen to Honorable Gideon Mulyungi present this report and trying to isolate the few areas where we need to improve, I really want to say congratulations to that committee, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, a number of observations and recommendations have been made by this uh, committee, and I want to single a few just to explain what is happening. The first one is a situation where we have projects which are started by members of parliament, and when there's change of leadership, then those projects are never completed. And what the committee is saying is that it is important that the national board make sure that all the projects being funded are completed within the, 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 the time frame of that particular uh, honorable member, so that we don't have these projects. But a rider to that, honorable speaker, is that uh, if you do proper public participation in your constituency, you realize that the projects which have been funded by all the uh, constituencies are actually projects for the members of the public or the voters in that particular constituency. And that's why, to me, I think, honorable members, the issue of you not completing projects because the person who was before you there has lost an election, does it make sense at all? So I think we really need to stick to that particular recommendation and make sure that it's implemented so that when a project is started, irrespective of who is the sitting member of parliament, because we are patrons, that that project is completed for the benefit of the voters in that particular area and the rest of the, uh, the public members who are in that particular area. The second point, Honorable Speaker, is the issue of the bursary checks. Where they are saying uh, bursaries have been issued, but the supporting document to show that this money reached the school might not be there in one way or the other. And when you look at this report, it is discussing from 2013 coming this way for three years. And Honorable Speaker, I think really I would want to support a recommendation which was given by one of the earlier speakers that when you go to a county, I think it would be good just to do a report, complete report from 2013 to date because you find year in, year out, most of the recommendations are cutting across. And it would be good just to get the, the reports which are up to date so that as you move to the future, then you don't have to go back to that count again and start at, from 2016. Because, you know, the, the more back you go, then the more the report becomes irrelevant in terms of application. And I think it's important we just sort one county fully, we go to another county, we sort it fully. And this matter of bursaries, Honorable Speaker, I want to agree with Honorable uh, Kimani Kuria when he says that majority of us who are young, you realize that most of them would not have gone to universities, would not have gone to secondary school, were it not for those bursary, uh, bursaries to, to the students, Honorable Speaker. And that's why I see the issue of bursaries. We need to take it very seriously as members of parliament because actually these bursaries have transformed families. They have transformed uh, individuals you realize that a family could not have afforded fees at all by the fact that you have managed to support one or two students, that family picks up and then they move forward. And I think this is really important. So we want to encourage our honorable members that when the auditor goes out there, honorable speaker, it would also be important before they start saying the accounting documents are not there to take their time and look at did this money reach the school? Because if it reached the school and it's only a document which is not there, then we can ask for that document that will be provided. Otherwise, it will be very unfair to have reports on the speaker, which are showing that money was never accounted for, when in reality, students have benefited out of that money. And I want to confirm to this house, honorable speaker, like my own constituency, if there's anything which has made me remain in this house, and I'm at that time, 
is the issue of bursaries. So that when we support these students, Honorable Speaker, they really appreciate, their parents appreciate, and you think we have transformed lives. And that's the reason why they think the leadership is adding value to their, to, to, to their lives, and then they keep on voting for you when the time for, uh, for elections comes, Honorable Speaker. The other point, Honorable Speaker, and this is the issue, Honorable Speaker, of uh, the, the board, the, the, the managers being the accounting officers. I totally agree with Honorable Mulyungu when he says that we are creating parallel centers of power where you have the accounting officer at the headquarters here and then you have another accounting officer at the, 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 the constituency level. I, and this has, to some extent, pushed situations where fund managers are no longer answerable to the headquarters. And then they become like rogue fund managers. Because the board we always appoint Honorable Speaker at that low level, some of them are not able to control these fund managers. I'm telling you, Honorable Speaker, I've shared experiences with most of my colleagues here. There are colleagues here who have changed their fund managers more than four times since they became members of parliament. Basically because these fund managers do not realize that their work is to facilitate. They see their work as stopping implementation and harassing uh, uh, locals. They forget that this position is a political position and there is always need to balance politics and the technical work. We are saying money must be accounted for, but at the same time, projects must be seen to be implemented. There, is, there are situations where there are unnecessary delays in implementation, Honorable Speaker. So, Honorable Speaker, even as we support this report, I really want to say the recommendations have been put forward by this committee. We take them seriously as a committee, as a house, and immediately we adopt this report, Honorable Speaker, the Committee on Implementation should immediately take action and make sure that these good recommendations are not lost and are implemented for the benefit of Kenyans. As I conclude, Honorable Speaker, uh, I, I was just wondering whether the wisdom of this House creating this committee was very, very good, but I'm wondering whether with 290 uh, constituencies and about 47 uh, counties, whether they will have enough time to sort out all what has been done within the, this, 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 the 13th Parliament. I, I wish that this committee could be investigated more so that they, we, they either we, we, we improve their budget so that they're able to go out more there so that within this 13th Parliament, Honorable Speaker, we are able to look at all these special funds and then we have our recommendations and we sort this matter once and for all. With those many remarks, Honorable Speaker, I once more want to appreciate Honorable Mulyungi for what he has done and this is just a test of what we have in Kitui County, Honorable Speaker. This is a test of the kind of leaders we have in Kitui County. And I can assure you, as we move through the future, we will be seeing more of this kind of reports coming from that committee. I congratulate and wish you well. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. What's your point of order? Honorable Speaker, I rise pass one to Standing Order 35 on quorum of this House. Honorable Speaker, 